This is quantum. I named it quantum because quantum sounds like quad, which means four, and this has four motors. Also, quantum physics is very weird and unstable, just like this airplane. The thought processes going on behind the scenes at Think Flight are incredibly deep. You may remember an earlier video on this channel where I tried to design an inherently unstable aircraft, an aircraft with the center of gravity behind its neutral point. That video came about when I ran across the forum post by one Adam Berger, who was in the process of designing an unstable home-built airplane of his own. Up until I read his postings, I had associated unstable aircraft with extreme maneuverability, something you'd find in a fighter aircraft. But as I read, it became clear that unstable aircraft have the possibility of being some of the most efficient aircraft as well. Utilizing the advantages of flying wings while minimizing the losses typically encountered due to the airfoils we have to use on flying wings to make them stable. Making an inherently unstable aircraft fly well is no trivial task, however, as you saw in the previous video. In fact, I wasn't even sure it was possible with today's off-the-shelf electronics. That video ended with some hope of success, but not a lot of realized success, which is where this video picks up the story. When using autopilots, I pretty much stick to Artupilot software, which has an incredibly responsive development team. I reached out for some ideas to tune an unstable airframe and they suggested a plan of attack that worked out well. Don't worry, you don't need to be familiar with Arduplane to follow what happened next. First off, it was recommended to use Fly-By-Wire A, which was a different stabilized mode than I had been using in the first video. Also, instead of just trying to figure out stabilization with the aircraft in an unstable configuration, I would tune and trim the aircraft in a stable configuration first. One with the center of gravity ahead of the aircraft's neutral point. Then, I would proceed to move the center of gravity back incrementally, each time retuning the aircraft with Arduplane's incredible auto-tune feature. Auto -tune. Eventually the test drone was tuned so that the center of gravity was about 4 millimeters behind the neutral point. Unfortunately that is about as far as Arduplane would let me go before the plane was too unstable even for the autopilot. But Arduplane had done it. I had a solid flying airplane that would be unflyable by a mere human. Mission accomplished. You will remember that I was testing out whether or not I could make an unstable plane fly for efficiency reasons. The plane I had been using though was designed to be as durable as possible since I suspected I may crash a time or two in the exploration process. Now that a workable process for creating an unstable aircraft had been discovered, I began thinking about what an efficient airframe using this discovery might look like. I also needed an existing aircraft as a benchmark to test against. You may remember Serenity V2, the second drone I built to test out wingtip motor efficiency. I had done a lot of efficiency testing on this airframe, and being a flying wing, it was the perfect airframe to test against. So I went about modifying Serenity V2 in my computer. Only two changes were really needed. One, I needed to remove reflex from the rear of the airfoil, which is a flying wing's equivalent of a conventional aircraft's horizontal stabilizer. This caused the airfoil to generate more lift. So now I had to make the core of the wing about 20% smaller so that I could carry the same weight as Serenity version 2, while traveling at the same speed as well. And that is the magic of unstable aircraft. The same amount of lift is generated with a smaller wing, and thus less drag. That is not the complete picture, but you get the idea. I now knew what to build and got started using my usual rapid prototyping method of a soft Kevlar application over expanded polypropylene foam. Here is one side prepped for the split elevons, and then we're on to the other side. Combined, both elevons will be almost 50% of the wingspan. I wanted to make sure the wing was the only thing that changed between Quantum and Serenity, so I was careful to make sure the fuselage was exactly the same size. Here the split elevons are just tacked in place with a couple pieces of tape, and now we're going to start covering, and we'll use the covering as a live hinge to complete the split elevon hinging. Alright guys, here we go. Okay, I spent the entire day wrapping up the electronics and this is the first all-up test with the props mounted, the motors going, all the surfaces activated, everything is live. Fantastic! I don't know if the tune is any good until I fly it, but everything seems to be going in the right direction. Once that was wrapped up, it was off to the flying field for the maiden voyage. Perfect. That doesn't happen every day. 
The tune left over from Serenity V2 was just fine for Quantum, and I had a good starting place to begin the process of moving the CG back to an unstable position. So we have about 7 ounces of lead in the nose and move the battery back. So we had the same center of gravity as the Maiden Flights. So we're going to try and see how much of that we can get out today and get the center of gravity as rearward as possible and still have a flyable plane and then do some efficiency testing another day. What is this? I spend a lot of my day task shifting. That's not very efficient. You'll notice I have no hair recently, and that's because I've been experimenting with this no-name razor to take the hair off of my head, the very little hair that was there. It was causing aerodynamic and weight problems. Now, timing myself moving from station to station as I was going throughout my workday, I noticed that having the reduction in weight and the aerodynamic advantages actually made me faster as I was task switching. That's a huge win. However, I was spending so much time shaving with this no-name shaver that I was actually coming out behind. That's where today's sponsor Manscaped came to the rescue. This shaver cuts so fast, you don't even feel it, and I was actually coming out ahead on time. Manscaped saved the day. Get 20% off plus free shipping at Manscaped with code STAY AERODYNAMIC. Your head will thank you. So I need to change modes here, because I have one mode that's probably getting a little too squirrely at this point. I have to also tune the roll, because that starts to get a lot twitchier. Hmm, do I need to launch it again? Oh, I popped the motor too. Alright, well that was a short day. Bummer. Yeah, I landed in nice grass too. One cycle down. So I have these control surfaces set up for a stable configuration. So if they had a lot of reflex in them. So as I go along, I'm gradually decreasing the mechanical reflex. After getting the CG back as far as the neutral point and still not running into any serious problems, I set up a test mission for Quantum to make sure that everything was ready for an all-up test, using the same efficiency mission I had previously used on Serenity V2. Auto. There was more to do to the airplane to get the most out of it, but I wanted to see where we were at. I never saw amps this low on Serenity V1 and 2.
The landing on a previous flight had popped one of the motors off and I unknowingly created a problem when reattaching the motor. That's the day. Apparently some of the glue I used to secure the motor had gotten onto the motor shaft, locking up the motor. It was an easy fix, but a wasted trip. On the way home, however, an omen of good fortune was found in the vehicle. Katrina the Caterpillar, goddess of four motor flying wings, had stopped by. As she was gently placed on an avocado leaf, she left us with a message. That just as she would soon spread her wings and fly far, so would Quantum. At some point I would love to set the record for the longest battery powered flight ever. Quantum is a test bed for some of the ideas in that journey. There is still a lot more to learn from Quantum which I hope to share in an upcoming video. In case you didn't already know, flight is magic. <laughs>